Tower of Fantasy is a massive open-world anime RPG cross-platform on both PC and mobile that features ultra-fast-paced action combat, the ability to switch between three different weapons, a world absolutely rammed with puzzles, collectibles, hidden stories and treasure, as well as the ability to create your dream waifu or husbando with an extremely in-depth character customization suite. Other than being a shared open-world RPG, Tower of Fantasy features a fully voice-acted main story with anime quality cutscenes, the ability to traverse the world via climbable walls, flying your jetpack, waterboard various mounts, or through unlocking teleports. This video is sponsored by Tower of Fantasy, however they just want a normal first impressions of the game with the usual pros and cons at the end. If you like what you see in this video then click the link in the description below to pre-register for Tower of Fantasy now. Tower of Fantasy, the next big anime RPG that I'm sure all you weebs are itching to play and create your ideal waifu. Let's see if it's any good. Game starts with a cutscene, waifu with massive hair. Okay, action packed start to the game and this is where we choose between male or female. Let's be honest, 90% of people that play this game, they're going with the female option to play waifu simulator. So let's go with that lazy waifu. WASD to move, you can double jump in this game. Shift is both a sprint and a dodge. Combat immediately feels super fast paced. And that's with just a left click and one ability. Buttery smooth animations, you can animation cancel with the dodge. You can climb walls in this game. You've got stamina though, so need to keep an eye on that. It's freezing, it probably has something to do with what you're wearing, love. You can double jump and you can dodge in the air and you can attack in the air and stay airbound for quite a while. And we've awoken into the bright, vibrant world of Tower of Fantasy. I love the colors straight away. This game also gives you pretty good control over the camera you can use the mouse wheel to scroll right the way in and get a good look around if you like. It's not one of those fixed position games where your camera is locked to this distance behind your character, which I really like. There's a good boy over here greeting me as I've woken up. Hello, friend. Big giant tower in the distance. I guess that is the Tower of Fantasy over there as the game's named after. Pretty cool start to the game. This is Astra Shelter, area code HT501. Voice acting's pretty good as well. You know, 10 minutes into the game and the first little lolly girls popped out. So this is where I finally get to customize my character. Five different starting presets and I'm guessing we can fine tune it. Let's start with this one and customize it a bit. You've got six different base outfits to choose from and you can fine tune the colors on each outfit. Big old boob physics as you move your character left to right, bit of fan service, as well as a little jiggle every time a new outfit pops in. <laughs> Let's go with this one. And this is where waifu dress up sim comes into play. There's a lot of hair customization in this game. So you've got front, middle and back. Outfit does not match the hair. Choose another hair color. Oh really? So I guess the hair is designed so it doesn't clip through the outfits, which is cool if that's the case. So certain outfits can only use certain middle hair types. But yeah, this is the reason why 90% of people choose females in anime games like this. Waifu dress up sim is is strong. Character shape, body shape, big head, small head, a few different height sliders. You can also have headband, earphones, bunny ears, facial features. So this is just a bunch of sliders. I don't really want to butcher my character though, but straight away character customization, very good in this game. No sliders, mouth sliders, more accessories like tattoos and stuff. I don't like her eyeballs though, they're a little bit creepy. I'm happy with that, complete. Okay, time for some big damage. This might have one of the most fluid combat systems I've seen in a mobile slash PC cross-platform RPG. It feels really fast paced and responsive. Super impressed so far. Also, nice attention to detail with the world. When you run through the grass, the grass actually moves. Your character has hair physics. You can hit trees and there's a bit of audio visual feedback there. It's little things like this that makes the world feel alive. We've just unlocked a jetpack, so tap two to use the jetpack. That's, well, the jetpack's cool. Just kind of boosts you up in the air. There's so many like little interactables throughout the world. Throw it at the chest. <laughs> okay, another treasure chest. The world's like littered with little distractions that you're gonna run into as you're questing. I love that. What's this? A thorn vine set on fire. Okay, we need to find fire. Looking for fire. Oh, hello, convenient fire. I'm going to pick you up. Throw convenient fire over here. Set fire to the thorns and open this. And after many distractions, I finally made it to my objective. Is this 
the map of the entire game. Seems big. Seems like a really good game for completionists. And if you look here, this tracks all of your progress. So in this one zone, Astra, there's 48 different supply pods, five different scenic points, six space rifts, 114 world exploration, like just running around the map, I guess, and three ruins. So each of these maps are going to be absolutely littered with distractions and things that you can explore. What's this? I'm trying to do the quests, but I just keep coming across random things in the world and I have to interact with them. Found a water core. Let's chuck it inside of this plant. <laughs> Eat up, big boy. And now it's going to puke up treasure for me. More exploration progress. Every time I see a mob, because the combat's so fun, I just want to attack it. Even if I don't need to, just attack it for the hell of it. I can already tell that people are going to love this game. It's going to be massively popular. Giant open worlds, anime graphics, nice art style. The gameplay feels buttery smooth, really fun. And there's just tons of things to get distracted with and lots of like map completion. I love this slow-mo dodge system. Before an, an enemy attacks, you can slow down time if you dodge correctly and it feels really satisfying. Dodge, there it is, perfect. You go with the big damage and take him out. First proper little boss fight by the looks of it. Do my AOE spin, dodge. Oh, big damage, that's cool. Combo, wait, is he dead already? You are already dead. Nani? Okay, so this is where the gacha system comes into play. In this game, the gacha is with weapons. Thunderous Halberd, SR. Did I just get really lucky? Oh, okay, so there is gacha in the form of waifus as well. So gacha in this game does come in the form of weapons and heroes. Initially, I thought it was just weapons, but apparently the system simulates uh, legendary warriors and uses that data to transmit it onto your character. This thing seems insanely strong. Let's upgrade it. Enhance. Take that to level three. Now my character looks completely different. But in the cutscenes, my character is still the character that is shown. Oh, okay. You can just teleport around the map. Okay. We're being raided by ravagers. No problem because I'm here to bring the damage. Swap to your bow and shoot down the wings of the ravagers. Okay. I've got a bow now, apparently. Deal some nice damage. And they're dead. Level 10. Wait, so I guess that means I've unlocked three weapon slots now. Yes, indeed. Always handy to have a ranged weapon. So now I need to jump on a turret and blow everything away. It's been a pretty cool start to the game so far. It's introduced so many different mechanics to me. Now I've got a hoverboard. That's cool. Okay, now I've got armed wings. Escalating quickly, isn't it? I'm shooting down the Ravager's mothership now. Go over here. This looks like a boss area. It's a big open plains. Is it what I think it is? Here we go. He's going to turn himself into a boss. Why did you do that to yourself? You've made yourself so big that if you wanted to go inside 7-Eleven, you couldn't do it anymore. You're too big for the door. How are you going to get groceries now? I've gained enough black nucleus to order 10 at once. So let's see if we get something good this time. Nope. I really like this background music right now. It's super chill. I might have to download the OST of this game and just like put it on in the background when I'm chilling. Okay, so now we're gonna enter our first ruins. I'm guessing this is like a dungeon or something. Throw some of these, clear the area a little bit before we get down there. That's it, Craig. Yeah, just stand in an explosion yourself. That's good gameplay, isn't it? Great gamer. First boss, Hyenatron. It doesn't look like a hyena to me. Ooh. Okay, let's dodge that. Yeah, this is cool. Keep dodging. Switch. Oh, big damage. Crit him in the back. Oh, it's gonna blow up. Okay, that was my first real boss fight. Pretty fun, especially now I've got this missile barrage thing. Success. Now I'm finally atop this giant tower. Pretty cool scenery. Look at this. It's like a giant space city in the sky. Ooh, wait, are we gonna get ourselves a motorbike? Vehicles unlocked. Press V, that's gonna whip out my bike, and that's gonna be a faster way to travel around the world. Press space bar, it does a little jump. Pretty cool. Let's see what other vehicles the game has. Later on, you can get robots, this thing, car, horse, whatever this is. 
Cube. <laughs> Many different mounts. I've unlocked a new simulacrum, Bay Ling. Let's be Bay Ling for a bit. Looks pretty cool. I think Bay Ling specializes in being an archer. I really like the look of this hero. It's a cool style, short hair, emo, masked look. I like it. Go to adventure and begin an adventure to increase your level. This is what I've been waiting for. The moment where I get to just go out, explore the world, and do more sandboxy stuff to make progress. The MSQ stuff is fun, but I'm definitely at the point where I just want to go around, do map completion, explore, have fun in the open world. Right, now I'm level 18, I can do Ruins 3. So let's go in here. Oh, this is different. I've got my Missile Barrage and I've got my Omnium Hand Cannon. Try using the Hand Cannon to help you climb the wall. How's that going to help me climb the wall? That way, I guess. Onto the final boss, I guess. Okay, we'll chronoed him. Pop some big damage. Get in there. Keep away from the ground. Okay. Convenient platform. Pretty cool boss fight, really. He takes quite a long time to kill. Lots of health. So, when I do kill him, I'm not going to feel like it's a fluke or anything. And he's dead. I feel like the first two hours or so of gameplay is just tutorial. And then when the game starts to open up a little bit, the difficulty improves quite a bit. And you can really enjoy the combat in long boss fights with multiple mechanics. If you're finding the game too easy in the first two hours, just persist with it because it does get a little bit more difficult. The jet board allows you to travel along rivers and down slopes quickly. Hell yes. There's so many different relics and little utility items in this game. Yeah, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Change the camera whilst you're surfing. And it looks like now we're heading into the second zone of the game. Goodbye, Tutorial Island. You will be missed. But now, the real adventure begins. So this looks like the base camp area of this zone. Various NPCs, crafting stations, item vendors, all of that kind of stuff. I've been here for five minutes and they've already got me doing chores, lifting boxes around. How rude. I've just noticed this, but the moon in this game is bloody huge. Imagine if the moon really looked like that. I'd love to live in a planet where the sky is filled with a celestial object that large. Right, so what I want to do now is go back to the starting island and 100% it, because just like leaving this island without 100% progress is really hurting my brain. Okay, so apparently I've unlocked a simulacra story. So let's try that. It's gonna give me one of these golden nucleus things. Okay, I've been teleported to a snow area. So this is another new character, Meryl. I guess we're gonna learn about her next. Perhaps we're also gonna unlock her once we finish this quest. I like all of these little mini games and puzzles. Definitely makes the gameplay feel varied. Ah, so this is gonna be a stealth section. Just don't run in the red thing. You can't see me even though I'm standing right in front of you. Noobs. And now we're playing as Meryl. So I guess we will unlock her soon. And Meryl uses a great sword. Yeah, that's my kind of character. And she does frost attacks. Hell yes, we need to unlock her. And on top of that, she's got the biggest hair of all the waifus. Best character we've seen in the game so far. Right, so I've finally got 10 gold nucleuses. Let's see if I can get something decent. Please give me an SSR. SR, Staff of Scars. Okay, so that's a new type of weapon. Test out the staff. Ooh, staff looks good. The staff dodge puts you through a mini black hole. I think it's going to take me a hell of a long time to 100% the zone of Astra. Probably not worth doing in this first impressions video. We're about four hours into the game at this point, and I've already seen enough to know that I'm going to play this game upon full release. So let's wrap up this first impressions video here. So after playing Tower of Fantasy for a few hours or so, my first impressions are as follows. The actual in-combat gameplay is the best I've experienced so far in an RPG that's mobile slash PC cross-platform. It's extremely responsive, the Chronosphere dodge mechanic feels amazing every time you pull it off, and the weapon swap system feels great. The general movement and world traversal also feels top tier. Double jump, attack in the air, dodge whilst in the air, jump at a wall and climb the wall, as well as a ton of vehicles to help you get around the map quickly. It's everything you'd want in terms of good movement gameplay. 
Each zone is littered with distractions, collectibles and treasures that break up the questing, make the gameplay feel varied and help the world feel alive. The base character customization is really good, I can imagine people spending hours making their perfect waifu here. For people that like story driven games, they'll most likely enjoy Tower of Fantasy as there's a lot of cutscenes, varied questing and it's fully voice acted. The early game sense of progression feels really nice, the game will be free to play upon release, the graphics and art style looks good with the game being made in Unreal Engine 4, and the background music is so good that people will be downloading the OST to listen to whilst they study. If you're not a fan of gacha or RNG, this game might not be for you. If you're not someone who likes story driven games or anime, this game also might not be for you. And the game seems to lack a character selection menu, and during the beta I was only able to make one character across all servers without any way of deleting that character. If you accidentally pick the wrong server and make a character then you can't change it if things stay the way they currently are with this beta test. I hope they fix this issue for the full release. Overall, after recording this video, I was sad that this game wasn't fully released yet as I wanted to keep playing it but with permanent progression. Tower of Fantasy is definitely a game pushing the boundaries of what's possible when it comes to cross-platform PC slash mobile RPGs. And from what I've seen, I think this game's going to be absolutely massive upon full release. I now understand why I've had so many people with anime profile pictures spamming my YouTube comments telling me to check out this game for the past few months now. But that's it for this video guys, shout out to Tower of Fantasy for the sponsorship and giving me access to the beta so I can cover the game. Tower of Fantasy will fully release on dual platforms in Q3 2022 and will be available on Steam and the Epic Store in Q4 2022, but you can click the links in the description below to pre-register for the game and add it to your wish lists now. Social media links on screen, gently caress the like button whilst making anime noises for the algorithm gods, and I'll see you in the next one.